Okay, so um, I'm going to talk about uh, the Malayali version of the Kanakatikaram. Uh, Babu uh, wrote uh, about the, the Tamil versions, and I'm uh, looking at the Western side of the story. Um, the handout you, you get is not the what I'm going to say. This is a translation of the first 10 verses of one of the versions. Uh, it covers uh, invocations, introduction, and the small numbers. Uh, you can look at it later. Uh, but uh, always assume that there are many mistakes there. It's still very difficult for us to handle this. Um, so this is what a uh, Kanakatikaram manuscript looks like. And um, uh, this is something that comes uh, in uh, many versions. So the, the name, the title, Karnakatikaram, means uh, something like uh, the rules of number or the treaties of calculation, something like uh, something in that semantic range. And this is a manual that presents um, first uh, numbers and units of measurement, and then practical or commercial or recreational problems uh, uh, depending on how you like to call them. This is the low level of the practical commercial problems. Nothing sophisticated, kind of the uh, uh, common denominator of what you find in Arabic, Chinese, uh, uh, European, uh, and other medieval texts. Uh, note that there is no arithmetic here, probably because arithmetic is mental. Uh, there's no indication of how to multiply or how to divide. Uh, so this is uh, probably something that we, we don't have any written record of, of, of uh, how, uh, as uh, Professor Subrado explained, we don't have any written record of how this was done. Uh, there are many versions. Uh, so there's the Tamil version, which uh, Babu has researched. Uh, this is attribu attributed to a specific 15th century author uh, in some of the versions. Uh, probably 15th century, it's not uh, uh, certain. It survives in various manuscripts, and we have, uh, I think, three print edition, modern print editions. Uh, the Malayalam versions are, uh, uh, all the Malayalam versions that we found are unattributed to anyone. Uh, they survive in, uh, well we have uh, quite a few manuscripts. Uh, we, locate, we, we, we located about uh, seven or eight. The catalogs have many more, but uh, there's always a gap between the catalog and what's actually in the library. Uh, there, wa there was a 19th century print edition, but we can't locate uh, a copy, and we didn't find any colophons in any of them. Uh, of course, the, uh, uh, sorry, yeah. um, there are several other related uh, treatises in Malayalam with uh, similar or slightly different names, like the Kanakusaram, which states that it combines the Kanakatikaram with the Lilavati, the famous uh, uh, Sanskrit uh, treatise on, on mathematics by uh, Bhaskara, the second Bhaskara. Uh, and um, despite common claims that uh, c uh, either in general all um, uh, vernacular mathematics come from Sanskrit or specifically the Kanakatikaram comes from Sanskrit uh, uh, or from the Lilavati, uh, this is not true. Uh, I think I found in the longest version that uh, I looked at, I found maybe uh, three out of 60 problems that can be said to, derive to, to be imported from the Lilavati. So this is a bit, a bit like the Leonardo story in, the in Abacus Mathematics. Um, linguistic characteristics, um, uh, a little bit about the relation between the Tamil and the Malayalam versions. So there are a few verse, uh, verses that are clearly adapted into Malayalam from Tamil. These are very similar languages who uh, were split, according to most researchers, say around 10th century. Um, uh, and this is uh, indicated by uh, corrupt, senseless, uh, senseless attempts to write uh, poetic terms uh, from uh, Tamil. Um, other verses that are common to uh, both sides could have migrated either way, and there are many uh, verses, or in fact most verses, do not have identifiable Tamil uh, uh, counterparts. So the, there is a lot of uh, independence and uh, variety. The language, we have, uh, uh, we have uh, verses with prose commentary, as far as we can tell, this is not very well versified, but it's very difficult to tell because uh, Malayalam meters are very irregular, um, or m at least less regular than the Tamil counterparts. Um, 
The language seems consistent with uh, 15th century, but again, I'm not an expert, so this is my very uh, uh, lowly educated guess. Uh, and uh, although it can't be, it can, it can also be interpreted as later, but coming from a, a Tamil Malayalam border uh, dialect. So we usually date Malayalam by its distance from Tamil, but the distance could be temporal or geographical, and we, this makes the dating uh, kind of difficult. Um, the language is difficult to decipher. The language, I, I mean, I, I worked on a Malayalam manuscript, I think, uh, about uh, five, even maybe even more uh, years ago. This was my first manuscript, and uh, I looked at it, and I deciphered, deciphered it and translated it very easily, and I was very happy, and I was, uh, said, oh, yeah, I got it. And then I got to this manuscript, and, 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 and I got stumped. Um, it's very difficult to decipher, and it seems that also the copies of these manuscripts uh, often couldn't make sense of what they were copying. We see all sorts of uh, varieties between different versions, none of them make sense, or even things that even phonetically or phonologically don't even make sense. So uh, even the copies have uh, trouble with this. And there are many uh, possible explanations. Uh, it could be that we have long chains of copying by non-expert, we could have migration between dialects, Another possible explanation is uh, maybe a temporal hiatus. So maybe this was popular in the 15th, 16th century, and then it was left aside, and then it regained popularity, say, 18th, 19th century, and then this gap creates a lot of difficulties in transmission. Um, or it might be that this is a primarily oral tradition uh, we in, in a poorly codified orthography and morpho uh, orthographic and morphological uh, uh, linguistic scape. So uh, this is my impression uh, of, of what you can get uh, from the linguistic analysis. Um, next, let's talk a little bit about the variations in content between these different treatises. Uh, the first part, so the invocations, the presentation of numbers and measurements, uh, the table of content, uh, has substantial overlaps among the various versions, but of course also many variations. Uh, when you come to the problems, there are even more variations, uh, very extreme variations in the problem part of the treatise. So, for instance, one version is organized like the Tamil version around uh, subjects. You have a gold chapter, wood volume chapter, land chapter, interest, and then a miscellaneous chapter. Then there's another uh, version which frames everything under the Malayalam, uh, rule of the Malayalam version of the rule of three. And it has a unique Malayalam uh, terminology, which I don't think is present elsewhere, uh, talapila and peruval, which means uh, mother, child, and expecting mother. So the idea is, um, the rule of three problem is uh, you, uh, four mangoes cost 10 rupee, how much is eight mangoes? So four man mangoes is the mother, 10 rupees is the child, and then uh, eight mango would be the expecting mother, what is going to be her child, what is going to be the corresponding price. And this is organizes the entire treatise. Uh, another version uh, hardly has any problem. It only has a, so a short discussion of a progression, a sum of progression, and then a, a brief introduction of Malayalam rule of three, and that's it. So you see uh, 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 many different versions, and none of them, none that I saw, actually fit uh, the thematic division and the number of problems that are set out in what I called table of contents, which are just two verses specifying the subjects and number of problems. Uh, so overall, the overall conclusion that we're talking about the genre, not a treatise. We, we can't do a critical edition because uh, there are too many variations. Uh, the, it, it is a, a, a kind of a, a family of texts, not a text. Uh, let's talk about the context of use. This is probably early ed education. It is indicated by the fact that it is structured like what we know from textbooks or manuals. So there's a list of master procedures applied to exemplary data. Uh, sometimes it, it is collated together with the anchovati, which are uh, multiplication tables that were studied by heart. These are extensive multiplication tables because you have to know all, uh, how to multiply all the different fractions that Professor Subrayalu has presented. So this is probably the, 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 the next stage after you memorize the uh, multiplication table. Uh, and this is also the most commonly surviving treatise on practical or commercial mathematics in Malayalam, so this is probably the, 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 the second most elementary after the Enchuvati. 
The target audience is unclear. We don't know uh, which caste, which professor, professions, which pr precise age group. We, could, uh, we have some evidence from the Tamil side, but uh, it's not if you try to date it back to the 15th or 16th century, it becomes much more uh, precarious. Um, let's talk about the content, the numbers. There is, uh, we were supposed to talk here about the numbers and measurements, so let's start with uh, uh, large and small numbers. So, uh, in terms of large numbers, there's a list of large powers of 10 in one of the verses. And this is very, very common in Sanskrit uh, literature. You have a list of high powers of 10, um, but uh, the Karnakatic arm list is not identical or not even very close to any of the Sanskrit versions. Uh, it is closest to the Jain or Buddhist version uh, because it has this thing of calling the powers of 10 something, and then the next one is Maha something, big something, which you find in the, uh, which is I found in the Jain and uh, Buddhist version. Um, there then come several lists of very small numbers. Now, uh, uh, there are uh, um, lists of small numbers, in fact, not small number, but small measurements in uh, the Sanskrit literature. Uh, they are less popular than the list of uh, high powers of 10, at least as far as I, as far as I can tell. Um, and they usually have a very regular uh, scale, either fi div keeping dividing by 8 or by 7, depending on the version. But this is not what happened in the Karnakatikaram. Um, and everything I'm going to say now uh, is about, again, remember, it's about numbers, not about measurements. So first, there's the, s there's the scale of numbers which uh, Professor Brialu uh, uh, mentioned. Uh, the highlighted ones are those which have distinct names, and the grayed out ones are those which have derivative names. Um, and this scale goes all, uh, uh, until one, and three, uh, 1 over 320. And then, as uh, was explained, there's uh, uh, another scale of the same fraction factored by this 1 over 320, and then sometimes there is a, there is a third scale. I didn't see a fourth, but in the... Um, uh, uh, um, inscriptions we did say uh, we, we do have a fourth and then after all these uh, uh, regular uh, divisions by note that this is powers of two and five suddenly comes the division uh, uh, by 21 which may be explained by if you have to divide by three the only way to make it finite is to introduce a fraction with a factor of three so this may be an explanation and then things get very very weird so after you divide into 21 imi uh, you divide into uh, seven arna or anu, uh, and then you have al several alternatives. And each alternative has uh, different uh, uh, terms and different numbers, and none of them make any practical sense. At least none that I could find. find. Uh, 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 specifically, the, the second one is, is quite crazy. Um, so... Uh, some of the names can be translated, others do not make uh, much sense uh, as Malayali words. Um, uh, and and uh, we note a lot of variations and inconsistencies between the different versions of the different manuscripts. Sometimes include all of them, sometimes include some of them, uh, sometimes um, change the names, some, uh, sometimes change the uh, uh, numbers in this sequence. Um, Again, as I said, many of the n terms of the numbers do not, uh, the names of the numbers do not make sense. And uh, most importantly, none of this is used in the actual problems. So you present a long list of crazy, very small numbers, which you're not going to use next. So this is something uh, to note. So now let's go to the measurements. Uh, so some of the measurements are very uh, well known from uh, uh, inscriptions and, uh, and, and the historical literature on measurements in the Tamil Malayali area. Um, but for instance, uh, you, have, you have measurements here that were uh, uh, presented by Professor Brayalu, but with different factors, different ra ratios between them. Uh, and then you go to very small uh, uh, numbers that uh, make little sense or you have uh, uh, more than one version uh, of, uh, this, uh, of, uh, of the same, uh, uh, of the same uh, uh, measurements. 
uh, the green ones are the ones that are actually used in the problems. All the rest are not used, in, are not mentioned in the problem. Uh, then the similar story for time and distance. Here you see something closer to what we know from the uh, Sanskrit literature. This, this scale here is, uh, oh, you don't see the arrow, sorry. <laughs> uh, so uh, where's the pole? Thank you. So uh, this scale here is very well known from uh, Sanskrit uh, astronomy or cosmology. Uh, this is a variation of something we have in the uh, Bhagavatam uh, with uh, different, uh, somewhat different names. Um, but for instance, this, which we recognize from other sources, uh, there's an inversion of order here. So the smaller becomes larger, the larger becomes smaller. Um, so uh, just to summarize what I said about measurements, there are variations and inconsistencies between the versions. Sometimes uh, uh, bet even between uh, uh, two verses in the same treaty, sometimes within a single verse you see different variations. Uh, there's hardly, hardly any attempt to localize the variance. We might say, okay, of course, there are many variations because there are many local measurements. But uh, uh, only in one or two verses do we have uh, in this city, this is the unit, in that city, that is the unit. There's no explicit attempt to localize the different variations. Um, there are clear overlaps with the Sanskrit tradition and with measurements actually used in Kerala, but also lots of deviations and idiosyncrasies and uh, uh, very small, practically useless measurements. Uh, many units are too small for, practic uh, for any practical use. Um, most units are not used in the problems that follow, and uh, some units that are used in the problems are not in the introduction. So we see that this is a very, um, this is a tradition that uh, cuts and pastes and removes and, 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 and brings together uh, very creatively over time. How to explain this uh, 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 strange, uh, seemingly practical, but not very practical kind of arithmetic? Uh, I'm just going to suggest possible explanations. I'm not committed to any of them, and I don't have strong proof for any of them. So I'm just uh, uh, trying to uh, imagine uh, all possible ex explanations I can think of. So maybe it's about the aura of arcane knowledge. Let's make uh, uh, strange names and complicated numbers in order to appear intelligent and wise and connected to uh, long-lost traditions. Maybe it's a memorization practice or an entry bar. So you want to study the Karnakatikaram, you want to study practical mathematics, first show me that you can memorize long lists of meaningless numbers that will show me that you are committed or have the mental capacities to actually uh, uh, do the work. Maybe it's a sort of abstraction by alienation. Maybe this is the point where you uh, uh, create a tension between mathematics and practice. And in order to do that, you, uh, you create numbers which have no practical values in order to uh, uh, alienate uh, the numbers from practice and maybe create a certain, a certain sense of abstraction which might be valuable for the future learning. Maybe it's about demonstrating the inf infinite horizon of mathematics. You can always make more and more uh, uh, divisions, uh, although none of this is presented as going uh, uh, in an unlimited way. There's always a last minimal unit. Um, maybe it's about the arbitrary conventional nature of mathematics to show you that uh, mathematics is not given but something that is uh, 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 created according to certain practices or uses uh, or uh, maybe aesthetic preferences or cultural norms or cultural values or religious value, uh, uh, religious uh, 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 um, uh, motivations, uh, etc. And maybe this is um, about presenting measurement as an arbitrary estimate rather than procedural practice. Maybe this is precisely the story of uh, how far this person from that person is. Well, we look and see and guess. Or how, how, how big is this field? We never measure. We just look and see and guess. Maybe the point is to uh, uh, highlight this arbitrary uh, uh, power, um, power relation embedded aspect of mathematics. It's not supposed to be uh, uh, committed to practice. It is an act of uh, imposing uh, your uh, um, numerical assessment. 
uh, more questions that I would like to open. Uh, how can we account for this tension between an obviously impractical list of, list of numbers and, measure, uh, and measurements and, on the other hand, practical mathematical problems? Maybe the answer is that they are not really practical. So although all of them fall on, do not fall on the, what we call, supra-utilitarian side, they all look utilitarian, still, think about the simple questions about the rule of three. So eight mangoes cost 10 rupees, how much is 16 mangoes? Well, probably not 20 rupees, because the more you sell, the more discount you give. So even rule of three, the, the most basic uh, uh, procedure, is not really practical. So maybe this tension between practicality and impracticality has, has to do with that. Um, so this is the question, are the problem really practical? And maybe this tension with respect to practice can tell us something about the system of knowledge in this culture, the position of the accountant of the t or the teacher. Maybe it can tells, tell us about uh, cultural values that can hopefully, uh, in a later stage of the research, might shed light on uh, even on uh, the, the highbrow Brahmin, uh, 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 well-respected uh, practices of uh, the Kerala School of Mathematical Astronomy. All of this is very, very open, uh, and uh, uh, that's uh, as far as I can go at this point. Thank you. If it's blinking, then give it a few seconds. I think blinking means that it's trying to connect to the uh, wi uh, yeah. wireless. Uh, well, regarding this, uh, well, there are several common things between Tamil and uh, Malayalam versions. Uh, but as you say, there are several passages which are not proper, uh, prop cannot be understood. The language is very difficult. So maybe uh, they copied from Tamil text uh, some without knowing their language. That may be one reason. Uh, but otherwise, uh, there are some terms which, uh, of course, if you take it as Tamil, it, it gives better meaning. This, uh, the three rules you said, Thalla, Pulla, uh, Peruval. Uh, this uh, seem to be talla means to deduct. I don't know pulla. Pulla, of course, uh, you have a child, but it may have some, some other meaning. So if it is deduct, it may be uh, add. And peruval is one who receive. That is maybe the, uh, what is called you. Uh, that may be, so, so, so maybe because without understanding the words they are using here, um, and regarding this uh, uh, small numbers, very, uh, very small numbers, in Tamil, Kanakadihar also, we have several that uh, lower than uh, numbers, which are very impractical. Actually, in the uh, liquid measures, uh, the, you have Savada. Savada is there. It is in Tamil also. It is Sevadu. So that seems to be the lowest uh, denomination in liquid measure as far as inscriptions are concerned. Even in, for, uh, in temple rituals, if they use uh, some small quantities, they don't go beyond the chavadu. Chavadu is, five chavadu is one arak. That is the, arak is the regular measure, small measure. In chavadu, they say 360 grains makes uh, one chavadu. Uh, one, that is, uh, in Tamil, it is chavadu. Beyond, beyond that, we don't have any practical measures, even in Tamil. In inscriptions, we don't have any other word below uh, this denomination. But in Kanakadiharam, we have several things which are not, as you say, they are not used in, uh, in the problems. So th that may be just an imaginary or something, creation of these uh, Kanakadiharam writers, so that we have, even in other fractions also, they have very lowest fractions. But in the case of other uh, things which uh, that, uh, um, what do you call these primary, secondary things, 
um, actually these things would have been meaningful only for the Chora period. After that, even in Tamil uh, inscriptions, we don't come across these small fractions. Uh, they stop with the major fractions only, that is a half quarter like that. And very rarely they use uh, uh, that mundiri, that is one 320. Um, so that culture, that uh, the culture which was using that, it's already passed. And when we come to uh, 16th or 17th century, they, they don't have any practical use. But as you said, they are just keeping it for memory purpose. They are using it uh, in uh, tables, and and other things. Um, just for thing, but in the case of this uh, computing interest rates by the merchants, sometimes they use very small fractions also because they needed uh, such things. Mm -hmm. Maybe in that context, they might have used mm -hmm. uh, in some, some Chetiar families in Tamil Nadu, they were using this minor fractions, but otherwise they, all the other fractions they, they might not have used. That is the, the thing. So what we need is, we have to, after you edit your text, you have to compare the Tamil text very closely and uh, find out which is uh, original, which is copy like that. That would uh, give us some good idea. And my in impression is most of these texts which, which survive now, they are not uh, before 15th century because they use Varahan and Panam which come into practice only in the 15th century, more popularly. Otherwise, they don't have uh, earlier uh, coin names in these uh, texts. Yeah, so thank you very much for these uh, comments that are very useful about whether to choose a Tamil or a Malayali interpretation. Um, uh, it, it, it's, it's always di very difficult uh, to decide when, when one takes uh, you in one direction and another in, uh, in another. Specifically for the Talapila uh, Perumal, uh, Peru Peru uh, um, I, I tend to uh, like the, this uh, mother child, the expecting mother that I found somewhere on the internet by someone who just, uh, some, uh, some amateur who wrote about it. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it might not be the authoritative one. Um, uh, the, um, uh, about, uh, comparing the Tamil and Malayalam and trying to figure out the, the, the original version, sometimes it works. There are specific verses that, that it works. Yes, it's very clear that uh, uh, this was a Tamil verse and it was uh, forced into a Malayalam, into Malayalam by, trying by, by corrupting the text into something that might look like it makes sense in Malayalam. It's very clear for some verses. For, s for other verses, not. And I would very much hesitate imposing a model of an Ur text the a first text which was written and then everything emerges from it. Pro much more likely uh, to speak about many different poems, many different verses recited in many uh, uh, different vi villages and then somehow collected and put to writing at the time where uh, uh, this kind of uh, 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 literature uh, started getting written massively in Kerala around the 15th, 16th century. Uh, and then you really can talk, cannot talk about origin. You cannot talk about the Tamil or Malayali origin. Uh, the, the verses might have traveled uh, uh, west and east, uh, uh, mixed up and got all sorts of uh, crazy uh, linguistic constructs. And, and this is part of why it's so difficult to read and interpret. Thanks. Um, I have a question regarding the numbers and the fractions, because if I remember correctly, it was half quarter and then four twentieth instead of fifth. And then again, there was three twentieth, and I was wondering if there's a meaning first to twenty, and also in general, do we avoid certain numbers? Do you prefer certain numbers or a system like sixty? And the second question, which is also related, I saw briefly that in the introduction they mentioned the whole word measuring Vishnu. So I was wondering if the choice of numbers also has a religious, spiritual uh, meaning. So. You know, the God who measures the word, uh, the, the world and divides it is, 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 a, 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 is a trope that repeats in many, many religions, including uh, in the Bible, or at least in the misreading of the Bi Bible, there's a verse where God measures the earth. In fact, it is a mistranslation. Uh, the, pol the verb is madad, but it's an old uh, meaning of madad, which means shuk. 
uh, but in the, in the only translation it appears the God measured the earth. Uh, this appears in, in various uh, religions, so uh, I don't know how much I can read to it in this specific context, and of course I have very little uh, uh, education about uh, 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 Hindu religion and, and, and uh, this kind of uh, cultural issue, so I cannot interpret it very well. Um, about the numbers, uh, 1 over 20 has a, uh, has a distinct name, Ma, uh, or Mav. Uh, and then uh, when you want to say fifth, you say four Ma. Why? I don't know. Whether we should take it so uh, very seriously or not, probably... Hmm? It's not four Ma. Why Ma is quarter. Yeah. Why by 20 is quarter. Yeah. But uh, so after this, they go to coin. What do you think? I, I, uh, in the Malayan version, you see, uh, you see four ma. Four ma, yes. Yeah, yeah. four ma uh, as fifth. Yeah, it, it exists, yeah. Um, uh, whether we should take it very seriously, the 20th has a name and fifth has a derived name, I'm not absolutely sure. Uh, what, what is clear is, is that this is a, a system that's based on division by two, but there's one place where you suddenly st uh, stick a five, probably so you can divide by 10, uh, moving to... The, Dravi the Dravidian system has traces of, an, um, uh, uh, of the basis eight. And then in today's uh, Dravidian uh, numbers, the, uh, the, basis, the basis 10. So taking a division by two and then suddenly sticking a five probably fits the historical development. Uh, but then if you need to divide by three, you're, uh, uh, you're, you've got problems because you have to repeat uh, very small fractions on and on and on. Uh, so either you round or, I mean, it's, it's the same problem in the decimal system. I mean, a third is 0 0.3333. Um, again, uh, whether we should take it very seriously or think about it very seriously is a problem. In all the number systems, I'm not sure it's, it's something that uh, has such, uh, uh, it's, it, it should be taken very seriously. Um, okay, okay, I have uh, two remarks. First of all, uh, and I think as, you, as usual, right, who decides what is practical or not? You know, is it you or is it the authors of the text? What, uh, if, uh, if we actually look at, the, at what the, uh, the person who, who copied this, the one that you translated, Kenneth Karam, he, that person gives his own values. He's saying that he's talking about good mathematics, about the essence of mathematics, so I think that uh, you know you can look at what the author says he's doing and you know abide by that. Uh, <laughs> um, and and okay, another um, thing. So uh, even though it's not to the scale of what you present here, in in many Sanskrit texts we have the same thing. And also you know in um, in like the Ganita Sara Samgraha, there's the same thing. And I don't know if you know of the work of Catherine Singh because she actually related some of these very small numbers to cos giant cosmological texts. And uh, I think it makes sense. And, and actually, these enumeration of very small elements and of very big elements, we find not only in, um, in, in mathematical texts, but you can find them in the Artha Shastra, like for instance, in the Sanskrit, etc. So maybe it has also to do with um, uh, the, the question of scaling, which is, um, uh, you know, understanding what is the very, very small, even if it's something you cannot see, and, 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 and situating that with the very, very big, and then sort of, you know, situating the realm of what you're studying. Um, so that's my it's sort of, it, it, of course, it's also speculative, <laughs> but it's my way of, of, um, of uh, understanding that. And uh, I don't agree that uh, things are very standard in the Sanskrit texts. I don't, I don't think they are. Um, I, y your texts aren't, but I don't think that you can say that they're less standard than the Sanskrit. Uh, you under yeah. So uh, first about the, the question of practical mathematics. Yes, I agree completely. It's not an actor category. It's an analytic category. Uh, uh, in the I'm trying to, in the sense of, did anybody ever use these methods to calculate anything? And uh, I mean, my assumption was always that yes, practical mathematics is practical, but then uh, uh, this is hearsay, so don't take it very seriously. But I heard from Sonia Brentis that um, Ulrich Rebstock, the, the expert on, on practical Arabic mathematics, 
uh, believed that none of the practical Arabic mathematics is at all practical, even the rule of three. No one actually used these methods. Uh, so suddenly I was shook in my belief that practical mathematics was practical, even the rule of three, and, 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 and uh, uh, this is why uh, I mention it, uh, because it, it's something that uh, I'm no longer uh, uh, certain of. In terms of uh, um, Sanskrit and uh, uh, the Sanskrit list, the difference that I see based on my limited experience and yours, your experience is, is obviously uh, uh, larger, is that the Sanskrit focus more on large number than small numbers, as opposed to the Malayalic, and that the uh, uh, Sanskrit multiples or divisor tend to be more regular. Uh, whether it's a wrong impression based on my uh, small sample or not, uh, I will have to figure out uh, as I read more. Uh, you are, uh, I agree with you that it is not regular in the sense that uh, you, you find, um, uh, uh, if you look at uh, three different Sanskrit texts, uh, trying to uh, do something similar to this uh, scale of uh, eight here, you see many variations. I agree, I saw it. So uh, this is something I agree. But the difference that I find now is more focus on small numbers and less regular factors. If five bankos cost 17 coins, then what's the price of 585? You say 500, that's 1700. 50, that's uh, uh, 770. And then 35, well, we uh, then it's only seven. So you can make the, uh, the calculation just by putting the coins up one after the other. So in that sense, that's not right. But there are other types which I would like to know whether they are there. One type is where you describe a s situation in real life, but ask a question which was never arise, for instance, no surveyor, no tax uh, official would ever go uh, start with knowing the sum of the square area and the four sides and ask for the side. And then there's a, uh, so uh, these are the uh, inverse problems. They are very common in fr from uh, uh, naval officers, no notebooks from the uh, 18th century and back in until early time. And then there's a Another type, yet, which well, we have something which is obviously meaningless as mathematics for anybody who knows. Uh, one th example is the use of the formula for second degree equations in thir for third degree equations in algebra. Anybody who understood algebra would know that presupposes that x squared is equal to x to the third, and that is that x must be one since n uh, zero uh, was not invented by as, an, uh, as a number in algebra. Or the use which starts with the row uh, 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 in uh, uh, liberal art arithmetic, but uh, uh, some of the agreements use the formulas for, uh, for um, polygonal numbers for area numbers. And at one time, uh, a factor of one half is lost for the Pentagon. And nobody notices because it would really not uh, uh, turn up. So these are three different types. Do you have the second or third type too? So hardly, hardly at all, v very little uh, traces of the uh, giving you the inverse uh, information that you will find in the field. Um, no, um, uh, that's not right. Maybe about gold, you may be, uh, in gold questions you do find uh, the, the non-measurable uh, uh, observation and derive the original from that. Uh, this is the, the one kind yeah. where you do see it, but not in geometry. You're not given the area and the diagonal. No, no, no. This doesn't oh, happen. That's in Mahavira. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there's no attempt, th there's hardly any attempt to invent, to, invent, uh, to make up false rules uh, of the sense of the, uh, of the kind of the cubic equation. Uh, again, this, uh, this type of thing ten ten tends to happen when you try to push the boundaries of your knowledge, and it happens here when they copy a problem, uh, one of the two or three problems they copy from the Lilavati are the two jumping monkeys. Uh, uh, and this requires you to know Pythagorean theorem or calculate with squares, uh, and they give the correct result, but the wrong procedure. They obviously didn't understand the procedure. Yeah. So this is really lower than what you are used to from the uh, 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 from uh, what you uh, have been talking about. And and about this question of, of again about the question of practice. So you know we are always stumped about uh, 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 the surveyor's rule. So. Um, 
you know, uh, you have an irregular square with size A, B, C, and D, and in many, in many texts you get the formula, the area is A plus C over 2 multiplied by B plus D over 2, and then you ask yourself, who could measure this way? It obviously creates such obvious uh, uh, problems. Who would measure this way? Um, th the answer I'm starting to, to get for based on, on, for example, what Arun told us is that uh, it doesn't matter because no one measured the area anyway. They estimated the sewing capacity. So who cares if you, if you use this formula for the area if the area does not play a part in calculating your tax? So this is maybe uh, uh, where, this, um, uh, where this kind of strange mathematical uh, uh, rules which can cause a lot of damage uh, come from. The, the usual explanation for this is to say, well, these are almost, uh, these are almost regular uh, 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 rectangle, so the deviation is not so big. Maybe the uh, a better answer is uh, this is the rule that you use when you don't, where you don't really uh, calculate tax from area and then there's no damage here. In Mesopotamia, uh, the, uh, the rule is used in real taxation uh, calculation really? when the quadrangle is almost regular. Uh, uh, so you cannot really see whether the uh, uh, angles are, uh, are right or not. Uh, uh, in, uh, there's one administrative text where it's, used, where it's obviously wrong, but that may be because the scribe pulled the leg of a corrupt uh, 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 person above him. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in some of the uh, school texts, it's used in, uh, just as a pretext for calculation. And it has a nice property that areas are additive, even with the wrong formula. So it makes good mathematics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 you make good mathematics, which does not, uh, which does not make good practice. But it's yeah. okay because you don't. Yeah, but the mes uh, in Mesopotamia, they knew the difference. Yeah. Yes, uh, uh, just a remark about the, uh, the last discussion. Uh, Jens, this formula is used, as you know, is used for uh, almost rectangular fields in cuneiform text with some exceptions. With some exceptions. Yes, with some exceptions which are very interesting because perhaps in the, uh, we could analyze these exceptions as you do. That is, uh, the, the goal is not to calculate the surface, but the result of the surveyor formula, which is not exactly the same thing. And it plays a special role in some demonstrations in problems published by uh, Freiberg uh, from a Skoyan collection. And the, the use of the surveyor formula is not intended to calculate the surface, but uh, as a step in a procedure to find something more complex. You know, do you, do you know, see, do you see what I mean? Uh, yes. 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 Mm. Well, but uh, it was not uh, on this that. Uh, I would like to ask a question because uh, the phenomenon that you are showing us is very, very interesting. That is the uh, first part of the treatise explaining systems or scales of uh, measurement units, numbers, and so on, which are not used actually in the problems, and more which may seem to be inconsistent, the one with the other. 
And um, uh, uh, it's very interesting because we have the same kind of phenomenon in problems, in cuneiform problems, list of problems dated to the Achaemenid period that is the uh, uh, fourth century before uh, the Common Era, in which uh, you have several uh, metrological systems for surfaces and for lengths, and series of problems with, which use the one after the other, these different systems. And the goal clearly is to convert the, uh, which method to convert the result in one system into another system. And uh, the historians in general analyze this kind of, of uh, text as an elaboration, an abstract elaboration on uh, metrologies and uh, change of metrology, conversion between them and that, and so on. Until recently, a uh, college who work on administrative texts found uh, examples of the use of these different area systems specific to cities. The, uh, one of these systems was attested in Babylon, another in Borsipa, another in Nippur, another in Uruk, and so on. So now the text appears to be a mathematical elaboration on different metrological systems, but not imaginary metrological systems or scales. Uh, we discuss this word uh, tomorrow. Uh, but um, uh, mathematical elaboration from local practices, uh, uh, which is not the same. That is, uh, the, it's a, a kind of work of people who has a mathematical purpose, working on metrology, which are provided by different practices, uh, local practices. And uh, uh, the chance we have uh, is the, the corpus of administrative texts where uh, we, can, uh, um, uh, we can understand these uh, different local uh, practices. So my question is, do you have administrative texts? Um, okay, so first about uh, your discussion about the surveyor's rule. Uh, uh, please, please, please write us a survey on the surveyor's rule. Uh, either of you or both of you together, please. We, I personally really, really need it. So a, 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 a good comprehensive paper about the surveys rule. Um, second, about uh, this, uh, 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 what, what may look imaginary but is actually practical. We're talking about units which are too small to be practical. So this is one indication that they are not coming from uh, practice. Um, uh, also, we don't, in this, in the Kanakatikaram, I don't have good dictionaries between different systems of measurement. Uh, unfortunately, we would like to have them. Probably they are impossible because of the too many variations between the uh, uh, systems of measurement. The, the administrative texts that we have are either what Ganesh uh, uh, analyzed in, in uh, uh, what Arun was talking about, what Subrayalu analyzed in the inscriptions. This is the administrative the text that we have. We find some of these uh, 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 measurements in those texts, uh, not all of them, uh, sometimes with similar relations, some with very different relations. Um, so, so it, uh, and, and I think uh, uh, what Subrayalu uh, explained that it makes sense for the Chola period, but when you quote these units after the Chola period, uh, this becomes imaginary, is probably a good way of, uh, of putting what's going on. Massively over time, but yeah. um, more than a question, maybe it's a comment. I was, I really liked your list of possible explanations, and um, I was very struck by the similarity between your idea that, among other things, this might have to do with the conventional nature of mathematics or measurement as arbitrary estimate. Because um, in the past, I worked on a, a small treatise in Latin, which was about units of currency. 
And he went into really, really small subunits of nominally, in principle, the, you know, the coinage that existed at the time, but the author was very aware of the fact that there wasn't any coin that corresponded to those units. So he kind of implies that some of these are um, accountants' units. But what is really fascinating for me because of the similarity to what you hypothesize is that at the end, and unfortunately the treatise doesn't exist in its entirety, he launches, he starts to launch into uh, a discussion of the conventional nature of, uh, uh, well, mathematics in this case. I, why do we even have like one eleventh and not one thirteenth? I mean, not the real numbers in the treatise. So I, I, I think definitely that could be a possible explanation because I got the parallel from my time of a rather similar sort of text where that is given as an explanation. But I was wondering at the same time if you could say more about why that would make sense in your period. So I really don't know why it would make sense in my period. I mean, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm, try, uh, I'm trying to relate it a little bit to, to Arun's story. If measurement is an arbitrary act of power, then, then uh, either uh, a critical teacher parodies it by creating uh, crazy numbers, or uh, a, a non-critical teacher uh, emulates it by creating uh, a strange uh, uh, measurement. Um, uh, it's interesting that you mentioned this imaginary units of money because it, 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 uh, uh, this is part of my motivation for the whole thing, but not from the Indian context. I worked on Abacus uh, uh, text and I was really struck by, by the use of imaginary money, which is explicitly called imaginary money, because I thought this was... Uh, uh, a stepping stone in the in the in the process of of uh, of forming uh, of forming algebra uh, and and uh, crazy stuff like uh, taking the square root of negative numbers and calling the this imaginary um, uh, 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 something about being able to play with real money and imaginary money to together and convert them to each other uh, my suggestion was was part of the practical um, uh, uh, bed on which, practical ground on which uh, uh, algebra grew. So um, with this kind of insight about the uh, um, uh, Italian context, I was thinking to myself, okay, well, if may maybe there's a, 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 a similar kind of story to tell about the Indian context. Maybe I can look at practical mathematics and Kerala astronomy school and try to tell a story where the strange practices that we see in the vernacular realm may explain the strange achievement of what we see in the uh, mathematical astronomy realm. I'm not there yet at all. I'm not saying I'm, I ever will, but this is uh, like part of my fantasy or motivation for the whole story. Thank you. Uh, I'm really sorry that I'm going to return to uh, something on which we have uh, already discussed a lot. <laughs> but perhaps these um, questions could be useful for uh, going on with your study. Uh, you have used at the beginning three terms, practical, commercial, recreational. Uh, it seemed to me that um, when you said this, somehow you suggested that if there was an area of um, practice that would be trained in um, contrast with administration or things like that. So I was wondering, so I have a series of questions because perhaps they might help you. So I was wondering why you thought there was something um, more connected with trade, because we might also put forward the hypothesis that there is a kind of generic mathematical knowledge that might be useful for several types of people. So is it something generic? Is it something specific? And when we speak of practical, for me, uh, there are several ways in which one can be practical. We can have, for instance, in problems, data that are practical, whether they be norms, 
used to compute taxes, whether they be prices that might have had some uh, truth in them. And there is also the practicality of a way of doing something that you might want to teach, you might want to learn, uh, independently from the problem with which you learn this. So there is the practicality of the knowledge versus the practicality of the data. And so I was wondering um, along these directions that I have tried to outline, where you would situate your um, problems and why you think there are recreational problems. So uh, I use these three terms, practical slash commercial slash recreational, in order to situate it with respect to the um, existing literature, which uses these terms. But I use all three terms, not because I want to commit to all three or to anyone in specific, precisely to ask the question. Uh, are they practical? Are they commercial? Are they recreational? If so, what is the exact meaning I give to this term? This also goes back to Agat's question. Uh, and, and whether these terms should be used at all. I, uh, uh, this my motivation is precisely to rethink these categories. I haven't done it yet. I cannot give you a good answer. In fact, we didn't, uh, I mean, we didn't even analyze properly the, the problem section yet. I have like my own uh, tentative translation, which is um, uh, as bad as it can get. And uh, eventually uh, we'll get to it with Arun and write better uh, translation and then maybe uh, figure out uh, uh, a better understanding of this problem. And then maybe I can start rethinking seriously about which category of these three, if at all, I want to use. Maybe none of them uh, is relevant. Uh, this is still future work. Any other questions? Okay, so that brings us uh, to the close. Thank you, Roy. Thanks. Uh,